you're having an argument with your partner and you say, you're a stupid person and you've always been a stupid person and as far as I can tell, as far into the future as I can see, you're going to remain a stupid person. So what are they supposed to do? What are they going to do when you say that? They're going to cry, like if you mean it. They're going to get angry, if you mean it. And they're not going to like you very much. And why is that? Well, it's like, it's, it's assault, basically. The only way, really, the only thing that you can do in a situation like that is walk away, ignore it, respond in kind, or it degenerates into violence. That's it. Because there's no discussion. You haven't left the person anywhere to go. You've gone right to the top of their hierarchy and said everything about you is wrong and worse than that all the mechanisms that we could use to correct it won't work so those are fighting words so don't do that unless you want to have a fight so then you might say well what would you do instead and the answer is deliver the least amount of information you possibly can and so let's say you come home and your person is watching TV and you're kind of hoping they'd greet you at the door you, can't, you shouldn't break down into tears and say, you're a stupid person, you've always been a stupid person, and you're going to be a stupid person in the future. You should say, I have this peculiarity, and that is that when I come home, I don't have enough confidence to just be happy. I would like you to come and say, just shut the TV off for two minutes, come to the front door and say, hello, and then you can go back and watch your TV. Would it be okay if you did that? And they'll think, well, you'll have to pay for it somehow, <laughs> but then they'll, they'll probably do it. And so, but the thing is, is you've got to specify the routine that you want transformed at the highest possible level of resolution, and you want, to, you want to recommend the minimal necessary change that will satisfy you. So you can't say, if you loved me, you'd know how to greet me at the door. Ha, not helpful, because they're stupid. <laughs> right, and so are you so you have to spell it out it's like what do you want exactly what would make you satisfied and then you have to have your person like grudgingly practice that a few times and you have to let them do it very badly and also in a bad temper and then you have to reward them for it and then maybe three months later they'll do it properly so you need to know that because that's what people are like it's very hard for them to learn new things and they're very resistant to it but they're very responsive to reward so another thing this is partly what B.F. Skinner figured out so when he was training rats and he wanted a rat to do something one of the things he would do is he put maybe he was going to train the rat to climb a, a, a little ladder and I mean he could get rats to climb ladders and then climb across like the little monkey bars and then spin around three times and then you know whack a ball and then eat something like he got incredibly complex behavior out of rats and the way he did that was patience so he put the ladder in the cage and the rat would just run around doing rat things and then it would put its hand on the on the first rung and Skinner would give it a pellet and so he did you know after even once the rat's going to be like stand in the immediate vicinity of the ladder and then it, the frequency with which it's going to go like this is just increased so then it does it again bang pellet well soon the rat is just going like this right so then you wait until the rat tries the other hand so you give it a pellet then well then it's going like this and then because it's going to get bored it'll go like this it'll hit the next stair bang you give it a pellet soon the rat's climbing and doing all the little things you want it to do now the problem with that is you have to be patient you have to wait till the rat does what you want. Okay, that's more relationship advice. Wait till the rat does what you want and then reward it. And it's unbelievably useful. It, and I, it, like, it's also extraordinarily positive. I mean, I'm being, you know, comical in, in so far as I can manage that about the situation. But people love reward and they love attention. People love attention more than anything else. And so if you're, you watch through the day, and when your partner does something that's good, say, man, that was good, or something like that, you can be inventive, and then they'll do it more. And if you do that a whole bunch, like for a year, they'll be doing things that are good for you just all the time. But you have to be patient, which is very annoying, and you have to suppress your response to only respond to negative things. You know, because what we know about the expectancy models is that a deviation from expectation produces a burst of negative emotions you know so you come home and the whole house is clean but there's like I don't know 
the dog has shed on the rug or something and the person overlooked that. It's like you're not going to see the clean house, you're going to see the rug with the dog fur on it. You're going to say, why didn't you clean up the rug with the dog fur? And they're going to say, good luck getting me to clean up the house again. And, you know, because the thing is, is the exception stands out and what's done doesn't. And the reason for that is you can just ignore what's done because it's done. It doesn't get in your way. So it gets invisible really quickly. So you really got to watch that tendency. One of the things Nietzsche said was that if you really want to punish someone, you don't punish them when they do something wrong. Because they expect that. That's not a punishment. They expect that. They might even be relieved by it. You want to punish them when they do something right. Because then you'll really hurt them. And so that's something to think about. In your, if you're in a relationship, man, if someone's done something right, do not punish them. You do that two or three times, and that's it. And you're not going to get them to, to do that anymore. So judiciousness. Watch what they're doing. If something happens that good, that's good, notice it. And, you know, if they've done a bunch of things, don't concentrate on the things they did wrong. That's not smart. It, it's really hard on them, too. Like, it, this, in some sense, this sounds manipulative and selfish, you know, because I'm teaching you how to train your partner. But, <laughs> but you should also teach them how to train you. Because it would be really nice if you could come home and the person would say, well, what did you do today? And you say, you know, here's a bunch of things I did. And they say, you, they say well, this looks really good and that was great. And why don't you do some more of that? And you're like, oh boy, it was a great day. And so, you know, you can train them to train you properly. And that's a really helpful thing, especially if you do it over a few years. You know, you can, that's how you have a good relationship because you're both clueless as hell to begin with. You don't know even what would make you happy, much less what would make the other person happy. And so you've got to figure these things out bit by bit and then you have to inform each other and then you have to be patient enough to let your partner do these things really badly. I'll give you another example. Sometimes, sometimes I... I see couples sporadically in my, in my clinical practice. I'm not a couples counselor. And so, but sometimes when I'm working with someone, there's an issue that needs to be discussed with, with both people because otherwise it's just stupid. And one of the things I often recommend to people, especially once they have kids, is that they set aside, to use an anachronistic phrase, date, date nights. Well, everyone hates that idea. It's like they say, well, you know, they'll just say that's, I'm not doing that. That would be one objection. We're just not doing that. You know, that's what we did before we got married. Um, they'll say, well, my partner would never go for that. Um, they've got a bunch of excuses why that isn't going to work. And so I've heard all those excuses. I know all of them. And then maybe I convince them, yeah, yeah, sure, I know. This is stupid. It's awkward. It's, 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 uh, artificial, that's okay, just try it once. So then they go and try it, and then they come back and they say, we had an absolutely miserable time. Really, we had a miserable time. We couldn't agree on what movie to go to, and then, you know, she took me to her movie, and I really didn't like it, and so we fought all the way home. We're never doing that again. And I say, well, really, you've got 30 years, 400 days, that's 12,000 days. Okay, so you're not going to do that. You're going to spend the next 12,000 days without having any real romantic evenings and interactions with your spouse. That's your plan. And I like doing, I like doing arithmetic with my clients. Hey, they hate that. They hate, they hate arithmetic. It's like, well, no, that sounds like a bad idea. I said, okay, well, would you like some romance in your life, or are you just done with that? Well, well really, like, you know, people can go for a long time with no romance at all. I say, well, no, maybe we'd like some of that. Well, how much? Once a year. Well, no. Once a month. Well, no. Once every two weeks. Well, sometimes people are really busy. It's like, okay, that beats the hell out of zero. Once a week. Twice a week. Okay, whatever. We're going we're gonna to start with a range. Okay, what would a good evening look like? Like, if you could both get exactly what you wanted, what would it look like? Well, then they have to think about that because the, the previous theory was, my stupid partner should know what I like, and that's what their, the partner is thinking, too. It's like, good luck with that, because no, they don't have a clue, especially if they're men. They don't have a clue. <laughs> so you have to tell them what you want and how they could deliver it, and vice versa, which is very awkward and horrible. And then you have to practice it for six months, because, you know, it takes a lot of practice to do something sophisticated really well. And then if you do that, it's like, poof, 
You got it for the rest of your life. So it's worth the aggravation. You know, and the first time the rat puts its paw up on the ladder, it's just sort of doing it accidentally. You can't expect it to do it well. And that's exactly how to view your own progress and the progress of your partners. Like, let them do it badly for a while. At least they're doing it. So, and if you think they should do it faster, well, look real hard and see how easy it is to change your own behavior. Because it's really hard to change your own behavior. Everybody says, I'm going to exercise three times a week. <laughs> New Year's. And it's like, no one does. They buy the memberships. <laughs> and then they feel guilty for having them, but they don't actually go to the gym. And that's a perfect example of how difficult it is to transform behavior.